encourage her to get you in the holiday spirit if you're not already there, although the stores are trying to push us into Christmas, even though we haven't had turkey yet, right? Yeah. But um, this is my 95th book, and it's called Cookie Perfection. Created so many wonderful, wonderful books since uh, my first book, Entertaining in 1982. I hope some of you have that book, because that's still like a gold standard cookbook. But um, but it's fun to concentrate on cookies for this particular season. In fact, um, every year I give a big holiday party at my house. Uh, you're all invited. I'm not going to tell you the date. <laughs> To that party, um, and it's my open house for, for my friends and family members, and um, and I decided this year because of this book to uh, call it cocktails and cookies. Uh, so we're going to have an afternoon party of cocktails and cookies, and hopefully uh, you know maybe some other savory things, but um, it'll be a lot of fun, and we're going to make so many cookies. Last year we had the party and. Um, after the party, it was about it lasted about three and a half hours, and I never got to the cookie house. We I, had, I live on an old farm in uh, Bedford, New York, and there's about six houses on the property, and each house was decorated for Christmas. And the and the house that's called the tenant house, which is my daughter's house, which is meant for children, was filled with all the cookies, and um, and I never got past the the hors d'oeuvre house and the, and the food house. And then at the end of the party, when everybody was gone, I went down to get myself some cookies. I was dying for some of the cookies. Went in there, there was not one cookie left. <laughs> <in life. laughs> out of hundreds and hundreds of cookies. Uh, we put out little cellophane bags for people to take cookies. They took every cookie. So I'm not going to make that mistake this year. I'm going to hide some cookies from you. But um, we have some very nice cookies. The, the book is organized nicely, too. Um, it is, um, and by the way, we're having a book signing afterward uh, if you're interested in, in seeing the book. Um, the, it's organized, uh, as we try to do with all our books, into the kinds of cookies. We have giant cookies. We have um, tools of the trade. We have cookies of it by any other name. We have celebration cookies, basic cookies. And we can tell you all the things that you need in your pantry, too, to make good cookies. Um, it's funny, I, I did a demo somewhere, I won't mention where, but um, I thought, oh, these recipes are so foolproof, but that's if you make them with good ingredients. The person, the people who are making the cookies at this one place I went, used to kind of inferior ingredients, and the cookies did not taste anything like I was used to. So be careful about your ingredients. It's really essential that you buy good butter, the best unbleached flour, the best um, raisins. You know, it's, it's no more expensive to buy the best. You just have to know what, what is the best. Good vanilla, and, uh, and then make delicious cookies. Cookies originally were described, and if you look it up in the dictionary, as uh, round, flat, small, sweet bites made out of dough, some flavored, some some studded with raisins or nuts. And now, of course, you know that cookies are very, very different than that. They are stacked, they are filled, they are cut, they are uh, giant. We're making these beautiful wreath cookies. These are so pretty for Christmas. You can, that whatever you put on as decoration, it can vary from Christmas to Easter to summertime, uh, even to Halloween. We're also making what I would call the kitchen sink cookie. Now this cookie, I just ate one um, when I got it because I was so hungry after a four and a half hour drive. This is so delicious. And it's filled with tart dried fruit, roasted nuts, uh, toasted nuts, and, uh, coconut. And it is really, this is the cookie that's supposed to last you the whole day. You're not supposed to eat it all at once. But the kitchen sink, and it is really one of the giant, best giant cookies. And I added up how much this cookie costs to make, about, I mean, to make about three dozen of them. Um, it's rather expensive. <laughs> Uh, and if we can get rid of a lot of the factory farming that we're doing, I, I, I haven't had a piece of chicken in a long time, unless it's my own chicken. And I, I, do, I do raise chickens, and uh, when they stop laying eggs, they become the soup, or they become the stock, or they become the, the, the SDO, or whatever, the, the local fat. Uh, and I don't mind that because I, I know what they've eaten, and I know that I'm not polluting the, the universe. So it's, it's important to think about it. And I think the larger 
bigger the, um, the population becomes in the world, uh, the less we have to rely on factory farming. So, I learned this cookie um, as 
a child uh, from my next door neighbors. Uh, their name was Mouse, M-A-U-S, Mr. and Mrs. Mouse, who were both as large as a house. <laughs> and they were German bakers, and they lived next door. They had a big four-door uh, Buick sedan, which was a beautiful car. They, which they, we didn't have a we didn't have two cars, so my dad would take the car to work, and uh, my mother would um, always find out the mouses were going to the monthly co-op, which was the grocery store, and we would uh, hitch a ride in the back seat. Just breathe.